name is Joey Balistrary and welcome to my channel and yay my bargain bead box is here for the month of July. I am so excited. I live for this box. I actually don't know how anybody who makes jewelry can live without bargain bead box. It is such a great resource for jewelry makers and crafters alike. This box is packed with Jasper beads and some really unusual things. So I'm going to dive right in because as I was setting up for my video, I've already decided what I'm going to make and I'm going to include that project at the end of my unboxing. So let's jump right in. It is called the Desert Sands Collection and it has 18 items in the box and if you were to buy them all individually it would be over $78. So again for the price free shipping in the United States and they ship internationally as well. I think you have to pay a little bit more for the shipping. You just cannot beat this. So I am going to just go quickly through everything. I already have favorites as I said and I already know what my first project is going to be. So I love it when they put chain in the box and this is one of my favorite chains. This is one meter of four by two millimeter brass diamond cut chain. I absolutely love this chain, this size and everything. I do a lot with it. I make earrings with it a lot of times and I love dainty jewelry. So this is perfect for that. And one meter is enough to do a nice size necklace. Um, then I am just totally in love with this and that's saying something because I'm not a big silver lover Mostly I buy and make and wear gold, but look at these cool little tags They're like they're sterling silver plated They are brass and they are just a textured rectangle charm, but they're so contemporary and unique and even like a minimalist thing and so I am definitely going to make a pair of earrings with these which will coordinate with my design that I have in mind I'm so excited so I'm gonna jump right to the thing that has made me come up with the design it is basically that same exact element but this is a rectangle link so each one of these I don't know if you can see because they're so shiny, but each one of these has a hole on either end and they are the same size as the little charms, but they are links with two holes in them. And that is what inspired my idea for my first design. So I love those. And as I said, I don't usually gravitate to silver as much as I do gold, but these speak to me. I'm so excited to work with those. And then the founder of Bargain Beadbox, I remember her her saying one time that she could hardly design without bead caps so she always tries to put bead caps in the box each month so this is a dotted wavy bead cap and there are 20 pieces here and they are eight millimeter but you know with an eight millimeter bead cap you can fit them on you can put them on six millimeter sometimes even smaller and they even make a really pretty look stacked with other things on a larger bead so they are really great to have in your stash and then I love these. This looks almost like something you would find in your husband's toolbox. These are faceted rondelle spacer beads, but they have, um, like they're metal, but they do have the little facets in the mold of the metal. Can you see? They're so cool. So they look a little bit like a bolt or something that you would get out of your husband's tackle box or his toolbox, I meant to say. And then this is one of my other favorite, favorite, favorite things in the box. I love it when we get micro faceted beads and this is one of my favorites. It's the Lapis Lazuli and this is a three millimeter bead and I'm just dying over them. Can you see how much this is sparkling? Just every little movement, the way it catches the light. This is so gorgeous. I'm, it's amazing how much this can do in a design even though it's such a small bead so this is one of my very favorite items in this box and then this is really amazing um, i have my dad's dog tags from when he was in the marine corps and i have his purple heart and when i looked at this it just kind of reminded me of that um, i have a couple of years back like tags with your initial on them we're really having a moment it was a big jewelry trend and i think it's pretty classic i still love it but this one because of the color because of the silver it's stainless steel 
um, it just really kind of brought me back to what I knew about my dad's history and what I have of his. So that is really cool, kind of classic. Um, I could see this with something hanging in front of it and maybe on a leather cord. Just really kind of fun, casual, minimalist. That is a really cool little pendant. And then this is one of my other favorite things in the box. This is a six by four millimeter red rainbow jasper and these are rondelle beads. We received seven inches of this and that is so incredible because I mean, this is a stunning bead, and I always say this every time I do an unboxing, I wish we had feel -a vision because gemstones just feel so good against your skin, but these are so beautifully shaped. This is the smoothest, loveliest rondelle. They are just absolutely wonderful, and with these natural gemstones, like that one is a little bit like speckled some of them have a little bit of gray some green some like orange some like burnt red this one is like almost a um, like a sagey green I mean this is just so beautiful I really love that bead so great that we got such a long strand of that and then this is kind of cool this is a synthetic bead so this is man-made to look like the aqua terra jasper and i'm telling you if i didn't have this label here i would probably have just called this out to be aqua terra jasper we received a seven inch strand of this and it is pretty amazing and i'm saying that because i just bought some of this at our bead shop here in orlando that was going out of business and it looks exactly like what i bought so that's pretty cool uh, seven inch strand if I didn't say it and they're eight millimeter and then I have this toggle in my stash already but I love it it's such a great like size such a great just plain you can kind of dress this up or down you can make this a minimalist closure on something but it also goes great if you're doing a busier design or a multi strand design just great to have and then look at these you guys I cut my strand because I felt like I needed to pick up a few of them and show you that each one is a little work of art and different but the same this is so beautiful I absolutely love the shape of this we got seven inches of this and it is also picture Jasper it is an 18 millimeter rectangle oh I love that one that is beautiful oh and I love this one too look at that these are so beautiful and these if you wanted a little bit of a chunkier piece you could simply string this and that would be beautiful even on stretch cord this would be amazing but with an 18 millimeter rectangle bead you can also do fancy wire work you can make your own focal beads um, you can do connectors with these I mean this is just so amazing to play with oh this one is gorgeous on this side look it's speckled on that side and then more of a sand color on this side this is just gorgeous i mean you can really like look into each one those are wonderful just wonderful look at them all together i love that and then this is another favorite of mine in the box this these are just frosted glass round beads but they are six millimeter which for me is the sweet spot in beads you know if you are doing chunkier pieces you can use these as a spacer but if you want to make components where you're kind of coming up with your own color story or pattern the six millimeter bead is great for that if you like a little bit smaller lighter jewelry you can simply string six millimeter beads this is just like my favorite size of bead and I love this coral red they're calling it coral red but I see this as like a really like like uh, cranberry red or like a like um, you know not I don't know I don't see coral in that but it's definitely earthy it is beautiful with the Jasper beads look at it with those uh, rainbow Jasper so gorgeous so I'm thrilled and we've got a 14 inch strand of this bead so that is so great um, I'm still debating on what beads are going to go in my first project I know a couple of them that I'll definitely be using um, you know what I think I skipped this one I just glanced over as I'm thinking about the beads uh, this is a 16 inch strand and this is a crystal faceted rondelle and it has the AB in it it's got like a silver AB which is you know the Aurora Borealis finish on top of the beads and so look at the shimmer 
it's amazing and like I said 16 inches so you can do so much with this and it's in the turquoise color so we don't have turquoise in this box but this color is absolutely stunning with all of the earthy colors of the Jasper really it's even beautiful with this frosted red bead I love turquoise and red together absolutely a perfect color combination i have a whole pinterest board of red and turquoise fashion things i love that so sorry i missed that i just love having that in this box it's just that little pop of color and then as i said this box is packed with jasper here is a 15 inch strand and these are eight millimeter jasper rounds and they have the same thing going on as the rectangle beads where you could just literally study each bead look at this one i love the paler one and that one's even paler still and then some of them just have like all this veining they actually look like you're rock climbing or spelunking in a cave or something they're just amazing and again these are cool they have a nice weight like gemstones feel so good against our skin they're just amazing to work with i love that and then we have a little bicone bead it's a four millimeter it's called golden shadow it has the ab on it um, they're really nice for spacers and if you don't use it in your projects then you know they're great to have in your stash they if you do any bead weaving you always need these little bicones and this is another favorite of mine i have these i don't know if my color is exactly like this but this is a crystal barrel bead and i just absolutely love this this is also called dark red coral with the ab um like i say i don't see the coral in it because i I think of that as being a more orange red and this is definitely got a blue undertone it's the red that I really love but these are stunning I love these I love the shape I love the barrel shape I love the faceting I love this color again look at that with the turquoise there's just something gorgeous about red and turquoise so I love that and let's see we got um, 10 pieces of that and then I know that everyone's pendant is going to look different. This is a picture Jasper rectangular tab pendant. I don't know how well the camera is showing you the shape of this rectangle, but it's very dimensional with like an oval relief, like an oval size to it. And then it's elongated this way and look at the hole is gorgeous it's right at the top and i have to tell you i am in love with mine i mean as you see this jasper can have a lot of variations in color and striations and movement but i am in love with mine i love the way it has the lighter caramel colored striations and then a bit darker i love that dark brown line going around mine oh this side is even prettier and then the bottom being lighter i absolutely love 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 this pendant i may get out some real turquoise and add to this and do a piece i love this i don't think i'm going to use this in my first piece that i'm going to do but i'm crazy about my pendant it's a 30 by 16 and then the last item i always feel so sad when i get to the last item of a bead box this is equally as stunning this is also picture jasper but it is matte and it's that sweet size for me that six millimeter and so it's matte but it's not chalky it's very smooth very like satiny and again all the beautiful movement like there's everything from dark gray in there to almost like a taupe color and then some that have a lot of black veining in it I mean just really um, what I do when I work with these is cut my strands and sometimes I force myself to just do my stringing and let it be random but more often than not I have so much fun like sorting through them like to choose a bead for my earrings I'll cut them open and kind of you know choose the ones that i love the most that i love the little artwork in it so this is a stunning box i am so excited without any further ado i'm going to pause here clean up my mat and come back with my first project and so it'll just be a second for you this is super exciting um and if you are interested in getting the 
um, bargain bead box. I will put a link in the description box below. I have a discount code if you're a first time subscriber. And the cool thing about this, you can shop the sister website whether you're a subscriber or not. It's called Bead Box Bargains. I know people get confused with that. But if you subscribe to the box, and I don't know why you wouldn't, it's one of the most affordable boxes on the market. And every month it is packed with high quality crystal, glass, gemstones, and findings. I mean, you can't go wrong. I absolutely love this box. But um, once you're a subscriber, there is a discount code on the back of the little insert. There is a discount code that you can use uh, at the end of your order at for 30% off and you can use it as many times as you want during the month over and over again to go on the website and the website in itself is also a fabulous resource for jewelry people. So I just wanted to get that little bit of information in and I'm going to clean up and I'll be right back. This is so lovely. So I got my earrings done. What I'm doing is using 24 gauge gold wire and taking some of the micro faceted lapis and laying it on top of those little charms. And so if you can't tell, I have decided in this box to add gold in with a silver. It's a big trend for 2024. And then I feel like I can layer it with other things. Um, and so I'm kind of alternating. I did this earring with gold wire. I added in a little gold hematite spacer from my stash. And then on my bracelet, I've basically done the same thing. I have embellished those little links with some of that fine gauge wire and a couple, three of those little lapis beads and just kind of wire wrapped it. And then on the back, just, you know, secured it and tucked the wire just like we do when we do a wrap of any kind we tuck the wire so there's nothing scratchy and I've done two of them I'm going to do the third one with you and then this is my little component I've added in those little gold hematite spacers from my stash and um, 20 gauge gold wire for these components I always use the thickest gauge wire that I can fit through my beads the 20 gauge would not fit through these micro faceted so I had to go down to 24 in order to get the embellishment on on these little connectors and then I went through my entire strand of the picture Jasper rectangle beads and this is the one that just spoke to me I felt like it went the best with the blues and this rainbow Jasper that I'm using for the components so this bracelet is almost done I'm going to put this little toggle clasp on either end I have an assortment of jump rings that I made myself with that same 20 gauge wire and this will be the sweetest little set. I just love this. I actually love this even though this is, you know, really not my normal style, but I'm crazy about it. So let's do the next earring together. I separated out what I wanted for my earrings. And um, I am using, again, because of wanting to get these lapis beads, I'm using the 24 gauge wire for these earrings. And I took about a 20 inch piece, which may or may not be overkill. I don't, I don't know, but I'd rather have enough than run short. And I'm gonna like fold it in half and take one of those charms and slide it down to the middle. Just like that. And I'm going to draw those together really tight and just I'm going to pull out of the camera for just one second. I just want to smooth my two wires. And so it just looks like that. I'm going to come back to my ends here and draw those together and just stack my beads the same way that I did on my first earring. I really think this would be a great project for beginners who don't have a lot of experience with wire because it's extremely organic, extremely um, like art gallery where it's not all planned out and perfect. It's, you know, wonky by design. <laughs> and so um, like the way that the wire comes back down and the way because the little connectors are all textured and crinkled, I really think you can't mess this up. You know, like however your wrap comes out is how it's going to come out and be beautiful and one of a kind. So I think if you're kind of new to wire working, maybe you want to give this a try. <laughs> I'm just going to take my pliers and just pinch these two 
really tight. I want to try to match this earring as well as I can. If I were making a pendant, you know, I would just do it. But um, that is the thing about earrings. The first one is so much fun, you just create it. And the second one, you have to kind of match everything that you did. <laughs> Then my last little bead on my stack is this little hematite bead. And so, you know, two strands or two um, wires of the 24 gauge go through everything. And then what I'm going to do is turn this into a little loop. So I'm gonna kind of pretend I don't have two strands, get a hold of both of them right at the top of my hematite bead and just give it a 90 degree bend. I'm just going to wrap this as if it were a single wire and a normal wire wrapped loop. Just put my round nose plier. This little loop is what will attach to the ear wire so it doesn't need to be really big, just about like that. This is going to hit the camera when I wrap it over the top until I use up some of that length. So from here, it's just that I'm holding on to the two wires, but it's exactly the same that we do our wire wrapped loops. I'm just gonna pull out of the camera for one second because the tail of this wire is hitting everything. Let me just do a couple wraps. I'm just going to wrap right down to those beads. Give me one moment, I'll be back with you. That's pretty good. And now what I did on my other earring is separated the wires at this point. So I brought one of them around to the back Actually, I think I'm gonna wrap it around to the front. There's just a little space there I don't like, just to cover that up. And now I'm gonna snip this one in the back. And when I'm all done, I'll go back and make sure that it's tucked and that nothing is sharp. And um, let me straighten up that loop again. There. Okay, and now I'm just going to get a hold. You can do, this is very fine gauge wire, so you can maybe do it with your finger. If you need your pliers in there, you can. Um, I just did a little, kind of a little, um, maybe I'll grab it right here. Just a little wrap, like around the back. And I want this wire to show. I want it to come like, I'm gonna try to match want it to come across my bead, across my silver bead, try to match my other earring. And then I went around this right here. Kind of have a look at my first one. The first one is so fun. You don't have to like think about anything <laughs> because actually this one has turned out better than my first one. I like the way my wire has landed. And then I'm going to go down. I think I made a little bend. When you make earrings, especially earrings like this, it's really helpful to make them both at the same time. It's amazing how quickly you forget what you did if you make one and then come back to it even, even half an hour later. You've already forgotten exactly what you did. And now I'm going to thread on just three. I found that three of the micro faceted lapis really like fit nicely across these crinkle components. And then I'm just going to lay it in, kind of mirroring. So that one went to that side. This one I'm going to try to get it to kind of go to this side. And I'm just going to put my thumb over those and get some wraps as tight as I can. I'm not gonna worry too much about anything at this point except getting it tight because I can go back with my pliers. And I did go over the top. It's nice on these two for wire wrapping because the little crinkles really hold the wire. It's kind of, um, this is kind of reminiscent of the way that I wrap natural seashells. Let me have a look at my other one. I need to get my wire back up to here and get some wraps across there. So let me go here and back up the top. And now I'm just going to wrap it. OK. 
Okay, and now I can trim off in the back. Whoops, I didn't quite get it all the way to the back. And I can feel that it's sharp. So just like any other wrap, you just want to tuck that end, tuck it in, push it in somehow so it's not, so you don't feel anything. And there's my, where's my top one? Does it need to be tucked? No, it's right there. And it's pretty good, but I'm still going to just push it in and just straighten everything. And that looks amazing. I think this is so cute. Like if you were in um, an art gallery type boutique, you know, if you were on a, some kind of a holiday where there were local artists, this is the kind of thing that you would see. And I just think these are so beautiful, absolutely stunning. And I am a person who loves a bracelet and earring set even more than necklace and earrings. I just, that's that's what I wear most of the time. Those are so pretty. So now we're gonna do the same thing to this last little component. I'm gonna take a little length. It's actually what I cut off of my longer strand over here. And I'm just going to do that same thing to this connector, only on these, I started with three of the little lapis and I just laid them across. And on these, I did not try to match the others at all. I just, um, you know, wanted each one to be random and just be different and just to be a little, you know, a little wire art. So I'm gonna bring these down to the middle. And this is obviously more wire than you need, but you do need it. It's a working wire because if you try to do this with too short of a length, you will struggle. It's you just need the wire to, um, you know, to kind of wrap. So that's all I'm doing is laying my three beads just across and putting my thumb on it. And I'm just going to get some wraps in there. and switch hands because I want to wrap down to the other side. And like I said, these are so fun to wire wrap because there's a lot of little grooves. Whoops, this one is not where I want it to be. So, and here's a case in point. If you don't like a wrap, if something didn't work, you know, don't get frustrated. Unwrap it like that and go again. And again, that's like the secret to wire working, at least for me as I continue to practice and get better, is to always go slowly. I just seem to do better when I go slowly. I think I can get one more. Let's see, I'll go here. I kind of look for the natural path of the wire when I'm wrapping a seashell or, you know, anything like that. And now I'm just gonna come to the back and just give this a little twist just to lock it in place. The silver is so shiny and the gold that I can't see where my <laughs> where my wires are. It's flashing in my eyes. <laughs> okay. And now I am just going to trim this as closely as I can and this side too and just get in there with my pliers the best that I can I even use my nylon jaw pliers let me see if I can do it this way I don't want to put stress on my little on my little beads it's still sharp that's pretty good you don't want the back when you do something like this you don't want the back of your piece to be a disaster and to be a mess. Get, get rid of that. It's still sharp. You get it up, oh, perfect. That little bend just did it. And then what I did on my other ones, which tightens the wire, but also adds like a little kind of lightning bolt, is I just took a hold of the wire, this one wire, and just give it a twist. So it puts that cool, little bend in there and I did every wire and when you do that you're actually tightening it as well but it adds a little design element 
So my little components are embellished. And now for this one, I'm gonna do a wire wrapped loop. So that one I'm going to move up to 20 gauge wire. And I am going to do a wire wrapped loop. And I wanna leave myself Let's see, I want to leave myself a little extra wire because I think I might want to kind of repeat what I did in my earrings and just lay the wire across the stone. We'll see how it looks. As I said, very free form, very artisan, like art gallery type wire work, which is really fun because there's no right or wrong. You just do what feels right and what looks good and what pleases your eye. And I'm just gonna do maybe two wraps on this, maybe three. I tend to do three. And if I don't like my coils, I like to reach inside my loop and just gently line everything up. Of course, if you're doing messy wraps, you probably don't even want to do this, but I really lean towards like neater, neater wraps, neater jewelry. I'm going to trim this away and let me just tuck this. Sometimes it's better to wait until your bead is on because you have a little leverage. I may go back to that too. Now I'm just going to place my bead on here. And what I even had thought is that I might add in some of that 24 gauge wire and embellish this as well with some of those with some of those micro faceted lapis. I'll see. Let me get my my wraps in there and see how I feel about it. Okay, which side? I really do like this side. I like that side too. It's a beautiful stone. And I think I'm just going to see how this looks. I'm just going to bring this wire across that bead just for a little gold. And you know, again, the nice thing is if you're trying like a little bit of creative wire work like this, if you don't like it, you can always come back and snip it and then it's just a normal wire wrapped bead, you know? So like be brave because it's really fun. Let's see if I, so that's kind of pretty. Come around the back and just get this around here. Oh, that's pretty nice. And maybe a little lightning bolt. Trim off in the back. Just straighten everything. That's pretty cool. Let's see. I do think I want to try adding a few little lapis beads. Let me take another piece of this 24 gauge wire, make a start. Let me see where I want my, my lapis beads to go. Do I want them to go there or across this way? Not happy with that little space right there, so I'm going to better. Okay, I'm going to 
trim this. I'm just adding in the 24 gauge wire only because the the um, 20 gauge wire would not fit. These beads would not fit on it. Bring it around to the front. There we go. Now I'm just going to add a few onto the wire. Sometimes micro-faceted gems are harder to string than seed beads because of all the facets and they're so small. <laughs> Oh, I love that. And let's see, I want to go, I want it to stay right there. So I'm going to wrap this around. And this is where it's so artistic and fun. Just kind of decide where you want to go and see if I like it coming up the other side. Actually, I think I want to, um, I'm going to just bring this around to the back and trim off because I really like seeing a little bit of the Jasper and then my fancy embellishment. So I'm just going to trim off right here and tuck it. I'll put this back in the scrap bag. So if you've never tried that, like adding a finer gauge wire on top of your heavier gauge wire to embellish. I'm just going to fiddle with my wraps. It is a messy wrap, but you know, for me, I tend to do everything neater and <laughs> so I have to fuss with it a little bit. But I really love that component. I think it's really cool and it's nice and smooth on the back. So when it rests on the body, you know, in the bracelet, it will be comfortable. Okay, this is almost done whoops I pulled the wrong end of my I pulled the wrong end of my faceted little strand here okay and I think I'm done with those little hematite and now this is just a connection and I think I'm going to try connecting my little components right into the holes of the connectors without jump rings. I'm going to see how that does first. I used my two and a quarter millimeter one step looper for that reason because the loops are larger. And um, you know, a lot of times, so it, like it looks like it's gonna be okay. A lot of times that little space, that little extra space just really you know, gives you that nice, fluid, movable, move, movable movement <laughs> in your jewelry. <laughs> Apparently, I can't connect and talk at the same time. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. Okay, here I will need two jump rings, and I'm going to try really small ones. Mm, maybe these medium ones. I think these are five millimeter. I use my veil making pliers that I love so much for making jump rings, but I always forget to check so that I can tell you guys what the millimeter of jump ring is that it makes. I need one more component. So I'm going to go back Let's check the length. It is perfect. And so I think that I can add, I think I'll put my toggle on this side 
and my open part on this side and I'm going to try with just a really small this is a four millimeter or three millimeter jump ring and I'm gonna see if that will make it clasp easily Oh, the exciting part. Check my length. Oh, look at this stunning bracelet. This is gorgeous. I love this. This is a little departure for me from my normal style, but I really love it and it feels so good and like it's cool with the um, silver plated connectors and the gemstones. I think this is a really lovely design and this is one of the best things about getting Bargain Beadbox is that it is curated every month by someone else and it forces you to try things and to work with beads and colors and palettes that you probably on your own would not think to do or would not order or that maybe you wouldn't find some of these things like these cool connectors. So I will put some pictures up at the end. My phone battery died and I had to charge the phone really quickly. But I just wanted to say that if you are not a big wire worker or if you're new to wire working, this kind of a project is perfect to get accustomed to wrapping wire and to see how it lays and kind of the feel of it and to get good at it because you can't go wrong. You're just creating uneven, organic, um, you know, just purposefully wonky designs, but it is great practice to get the feel of wire and there's no way it can turn out wrong because you're just embellishing beads and components with wire and it's just super easy and you know, however yours comes out will be the art. So I just want to encourage you if you're new because I get so many messages of people that are new to jewelry to give this a try and again check the description box and um, I just want to wish everybody a safe happy summer and I hope you're all having fun on your beading mats and I will see you in the next video. Ciao jewelry making friends.